Okay, I'd like to thank uh, Dr. Phil Fernandez for joining us to answer a few questions that we've had in, in my debates as uh, Christian Voice 08 or Christian Voice 08 on YouTube. And Dr. Phil Fernandez is a PhD in philosophy and religion. Yes. And a master's in religion. And you're the uh, head of the Institute for Biblical Defense in Washington State. Yes. And what we have are a couple questions because in discussing things with atheists, I've come up with the, the lack of understanding by some people on epistemology, what the term means and how it applies to dealing with subjects of theism or atheism, pantheism, or any kind of religious or secular debate. Could you tell us what epistemology is as a professor? Yes, uh, epistemology is that branch of philosophy that deals with knowledge. So it answers questions like uh, what, what can we know, can we know it all? And, uh, and things of that sort. And can we adequately deal with issues of logic, reasoning, science, or mathematics if we don't have epistemology? Well, it, it, it's kind of like if, if you can't answer, if your philosophical worldview, if you can't answer the question, uh, uh, what can we know or how we know, then it seems like you're, you're stuck. You know, this is foundational. And uh, if, if your worldview, if your view of reality does not address that, epistemological issues, then uh, you know, have you really earned the right to go further? Uh, I'll give you an example. Uh, Dr. Michael Martin in his uh, uh, work, Atheism, a Philosophical Justification. In that work, uh, Dr. Michael Martin starts out with epistemology and then he talks about the fact that many of his colleagues, he and his colleagues don't agree as to what would be a good epistemology, what would be a good theory of knowledge, a good explanation uh, within the atheistic worldview as to how man can know. And so then he says, since there's no real widespread agreement on this, I'll just pass over it and we'll get into other issues. Um, well, you, that, that, that's a problem right there for atheism. If atheism cannot produce a valid theory of knowledge, then you've got a problem with your worldview. Now, what most atheists do is they just skip over the fact that atheism cannot provide a foundation for knowledge and, um, and what, what these atheists do is they live on what Cornelius Van Til, a Christian scholar, called borrowed capital from the Christian worldview. It's like the um, atheist bank account is empty. It's bankrupt. And they don't have the philosophical stuff in their worldview uh, to uh, form a foundation, an, an epistemological system. And so what they do is they borrow from the Christian worldview and then just whenever they need to, and that, that's just, uh, that's really not being honest. If your worldview cannot produce an epistemology, a theory as to how man can know, then uh, the rest of your uh, worldview falls like uh, a house of cards. So then we're to understand from uh, Dr. Martin that they don't necessarily, if there's not a consensus, then they don't have a real adequate answer for how we're going to make an argument for, for atheism and how we're going to defend our stance on atheism. Yeah, I, I don't see why he, he thinks he can proceed to argue for atheism if he hasn't answered that question. Now, and I'm not saying that all Christians agree on their own epistemology, but within the Christian worldview, if uh, human beings, finite knowers, were created by an infinite knower and in the image of the infinite knower, then uh, we just don't have that epistemological problem that you're going to see with the, with the atheist. The atheists, I mean, you know, if they believe we evolved from physical matter, uh, I don't see how you can evolve consciousness and the ability to know um, from, a, from a mound of dirt. It's just, it, it just not, the, the furniture is just not there in the atheistic worldview. Now that brings me to another question, real quick question on knowing, because we are keeping these, these answers very short to address the questions to Christians and to atheists. And that is the subject of presupposition. So in, in effect, both the Christian and the atheist debater both have presuppositions, and we as Christians are admitting to our presuppositions. Do you find it commonly that atheists are willing to admit to their own presuppositions, or are they holding that somehow epistemologically that they do have a, a way of knowing but that they won't reveal, or how, how does that work out? Yeah, I, everyone has presuppositions. If, you, if you're, you, you just can't prove everything, so you have to start somewhere. So everyone's got a starting point. Uh, the question is not do you have presuppositions. 
the question is, uh, are your presuppositions, is, can you make a good case for your presuppositions? And with the Christian worldview, I, I think we can. And not only can you, can you find evidence for your presuppositions, but also, based on your presuppositions, does the, world, does the world look the way it should look if your presuppositions are true? Well, thank you for your time, uh, Dr. Phil, the Dr. Phil. And uh, where can people go to get more information on philosophy in general and the Christian worldview, even atheists that would like to review your arguments and debate those arguments in their own mind? Well, they can come to, to our website, uh, biblicaldefense.org. That'd be a good place to start. And uh, we certainly provide uh, audio lectures and video lectures and debates and some papers and some information there. Um, uh, but from there, there's a lot, quite, a few, quite a bit of links that you can go to from our website to other websites like Gary Habermas out of Liberty University and, and Norman Geisler and Southern Evangelical Seminary and, and Biola and, and uh, Talbot School of Theology. So you can go from our website to a lot, lot of other areas as well. And there's certainly uh, good uh, uh, websites um, that are out there that make a good defense of the Christian worldview. And one little aside that I have to ask, that I'm seeing people say that we cannot agree to disagree. Do you have, as a, you're a Christian apologist, right? Yes. Now, do you have friends that are atheists that hold dipole positions to yours in worldview? Oh, yeah. I, uh, I have uh, many friends who are atheists, and um, I don't always see them as often as I'd like, because usually we, I become friends with them by debating them on college campuses. And uh, Jeffrey J. Louder, I, I consider him a good friend. I, I haven't been in contact with him and for quite some time, and I, but whenever I take debates with atheists who know him, I ask how he's doing and things of that sort. But, but there's an example of a guy I've known for probably close to 20 years now and consider him a good friend. Uh, I like Reggie Finley. I've been on his show several times, the infidel radio guy, and I've debated Dan Barker, consider him a friend. Uh, Dr. Michael Martin, when I got to meet him, I, you know, I debated him over the internet. When I got to meet him, uh, gave him a big hug, and he's a former Marine as well. So, so yeah, I have a lot, a lot of friends who are atheists, and uh, I, I, I en enjoyed my time with Elliot Ratzman when I debated him at Princeton. And, uh, and then even in, uh, in our own area, you know, as I dialogue with people of other faiths, and, and whether they be atheists or in other religions, uh, yeah, you don't have to be a Christian to be my friend. But I would love to dialogue with them about Christianity because I believe that salvation is only through uh, the Lord Jesus. That's great. That, that's the one thing I wanted to bring out because I, even though I disagree vehemently with some people online and, and, and try to point out logical errors, and I don't mind when they attack me and, and point out those same errors because if I make a mistake in, in debate, I'd like to correct it and bring real evidence that we stand on. But there's no animosity and no hatred in, in any way between us and people with different worldviews. I would consider us tolerant, even though people don't seem to understand that, but that's... Yeah, well, the uh, traditional definition of tolerance entailed freedom of religion and freedom of speech. Um, nowadays, we've redefined tolerance so that it's the belief that all behavior is equally wholesome and all beliefs are equally true. And by the way, if you don't agree with us, we can't tolerate you. Well, that traditionally has been considered into being intolerant. If you, if you only believe in the freedom of speech of those who agree with you, you're intolerant. And, um, but as a Christian, no, I, I believe in the freedom of speech. I believe in the freedom of religion. And I enjoy dialoguing with people of different worldviews. Great. Thank you for your time, uh, Dr. Phil, and we hope to talk to you again soon. Thank you.